just going around jobbing this week loads of easy little quick jobs uh, first one I've got to put proper double check valve on this outside tap supply well outside inside tap it's in the boiler room somebody's picked it up uh, so what I'm going to do pop an ISO valve on it and just pop a double check valve on get that one quick I've already got the water off probably be a little bit in it I know it's completely drained so yeah I'll just get this one done quick and get on straight on to the next I just unscrewed the tap back plate to give me a bit of movement the one screwdriver I didn't bring in was a Phillips but I can get it with my flathead anyway can't be bothered to go back to the van so I'll get that done up get that cut off and then I can just lift that up then and get that in obviously you double check valves for your fluid categories just to stop back flow if anybody would connect up hose say into a manky bucket of water and like there was a leak on the water main outside obviously it could all siphon back that's why that's why we've been asked to do it it's not a bad idea to pop a service valve on anyway That's it, we'll make sure that water's off, dry that up and we'll get the water back up. Alright, everything looks okay on that one, no leaks, nice easy one sorted to start the week. I had trouble with this years ago, um, I didn't fit that pump like that, obviously the flex weren't long enough. But what, this is the secondary return, obviously they've twinned the pumps up, but what it was doing, it was just going straight around that rather than going around the system. So I can't remember what I did, I think I priced to put check valves in. Did I put a check valve in? I can't remember. It's either that, no, there's no check valves. You have to turn one of the, the gate valves off, otherwise it just goes around the system. So yeah, that was another thing I did here. That's obviously the clarifier. We've just done that outside tap there, the uh, boilers on this one. But yeah, as I say, it's obviously had a new pump on it. Everything else looks okay. I always like just to make sure everything, make sure there's no leaks or anything. But yeah, everything looks fine on this one. Right, my second job of the day is take a radiator off. I've been here nearly an hour already. I did ring ahead and it was booked in, um, but the lad is still in bed at the minute, so there's nothing I can do. If The trouble is, if I go, I've only got to come back later. What they're doing is splitting the room in half, and there's a radiator dead in the middle. And obviously, it's going to need, we'll need to put two radiators back. But yeah, jobs like this, these little ones can take, take, take longer to get in than it would be to just do the job, but nothing I can do. I'm being paid for it, so I'm not too worried, but nightmare. I think I've got I think I've got about four others to have a look at after this as well, but we'll be alright, we'll get it done. Right, this job, somebody's been along and fitted water eaters and they've not put blender they've not put isolators on the inlet to the blender, so they can't do a DFT test. So I've just gotta go around every one. I think there's ten to do. Put isolators on the hot and the cold. I know you can isolate it there, but you can't do a full DFT test. So I just put one on the inlet, one on the cold inlet, one on the hot, and at least then you can do a test on that blender. So yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. Obviously, all the pipe works on the surface. Expansion vessels upside down, um, but apart from that, they look okay. They haven't actually picked that up, so I'll just pop these on. I just whip the blenders out. It makes it easier. Obviously, the importance of doing a DFT test on a blender, if the cold were to be isolated for whatever reason, the um, the hot wouldn't necessarily shut off, so you'd have red hot water coming through through to the taps, which is obviously not what we want. I mean, these are easy enough to do. Let's say, just use that little guide thing just to get it away from the spur. There's always going to be a drop of water in the pipes. There'll probably be a drop in this one if the check valve's slightly stuck. That's the problem, we're not putting ice in it. Everything breathes in there.
Right, so I just put isolators on the inlet to the blender. So we'll open the tap. And as soon as I turn the cold off to the blender, hot, hot will shut. We'll stop in a second, so that's passed. Turn the cold back on. Yeah, that's fine. So I've just got to go around and do all the others. I checked the temperatures as well, but they have already been checked and they have passed. Yeah, that'll be all right. I'm back on this one now. I've got these wash basins, well, I don't know, wash basins or sinks to plumb in. Um, I've had to order some special waste bits for them because they're inch and a quarter. Uh, so hopefully, I'm hoping the McAlpine ones will fit. Just inch and a quarter with overflow. Um, so I think that'll be all right. Obviously, we've got hot and cold. Um, that hot pipes, that cold pipes come off with everything. Hot, hot, cold, and waste. Basically, we've got to get a blender under here as well. I don't know where my taps are, um, but it's going to be a little bit tight with the back of the unit as to where the tap goes. So the tap maybe have to go over here because you're never going to get to it there, yeah. Um, so yeah, what I might do is plumb it all in first, get set my blender and everything up, and then we'll have a look at where the tap tap is going to be best. But I think. Oh, they're in that back corner, that's maybe why they've took that slot out. Probably in that back corner, I think. Um, so I've got two of these to do. Uh, one in here as well. So I've got that one to do as well. Um, we didn't actually do the joinery on this, so hence why the back's been butchered. Yeah, I'll do something with it anyway. And then I've just got the I've just got the kitchen sink to do in here as well. And then I've just got this kitchen sink to plumbing as well. Again, I've got to put a blender on here. So it's not fitted down, is it? Um, so yeah, I've got that to crack up with. And then I've also got all the rails and everything to put on in here um, for the dock end pack. I've got the wall trees and everything in. So yeah, that's gonna be the rest of my afternoon, I think, getting this bit done. They were the waste kits they got me to fit, just these click back ones, but obviously they're no good. A, we need an overflow and B, well, it's absolutely no good for that sink. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is just get a dust sheet down, get the water off, get some ISO valves on here, and we'll get these pipes in. I think cold was the right, I would have done it as hot on the left. Obviously that's our waste, so yeah, we'll crack straight on. I think that tap's going to have to go there somewhere. What I'll do is I'll centralise the gap, obviously you still be able to open the handle. I'll just put it in between the centre of there and there, I think. I think that'll look... That'll look okay. We'll run with that, and then even if the toilet, there's still going to be space. So we've got 140. So if we go, if we go about 80, does that look about right? Anything just slightly further forward, I think. That there looks okay. We'll go with that. The hole, the hole will be big enough anyway, so we'll move across a little bit. Go about there. What I need to do is seal the edge of this worktop because if any water gets down there, it's just going to blow the it's going to blow the chipboard. So just use some silicon. I'll do the same around the the basin cut out, so that'll just stop any any damage to the worktop if any water did leak. It's nothing special, just some just some silicon, and then we can get the tap in. We've got the world's longest flexi hoses. I don't know why they're so long, but. The trouble is, when they come with them, you don't have a lot of choice but to film. Just make sure you roll it. Start the wrong band here. And this is where I get my flexes covered in silicon.
and your half moony bits. Some of them you can fit from above, but you'll never get it through a workshop that thickness from above. is nice and solid or it will be when I finish turning it up um, yeah and what I'll do is I'll get all these um, pipes connected in first to so say I want it into a blender and yeah we'll drop the basin in last all right we've got the water off I did first fix it on push fit so that's why there's so much movement on the on the pipes just took a scab off that I heard that did. But where I live, I ain't going to the van to get a plaster. Too far to walk. Right, what we got? Right, this thing is a blending valve, thermostatic mixing valve. They've been asked us to set the temperature at 41 degrees on these. Obviously, inside there is a check valve and a filter. They just screw on with a washer. A washer on there and obviously you've got hot in cold in and then mixed out that controls the temperature and obviously you can adjust them inside there these are tmv3 so they'll go between 30 and 50. The basin should be between uh, what is it between 39 and 43 i normally say about 41 i think it's 39 and 43 or 39 and 41 um but yeah we'll go with that it probably tells you in the instructions anyway Generally, it comes out, and obviously, that's just your the one for the top just to go out on your mix. Okay, like that. Right, I'll just pop the sink back in because obviously, we need to look at where we're going to get the blending valve. Obviously, we need to make this as easy as you can to work on. So, it either wants to be there or there. So, what I'll probably do is take that hot pipe straight in uh, with an ISO valve, bring the cold round the bottom. And then swing that T off there for the cold to the sink. And yeah, that'll do it. Obviously, if we, if we put it up there or something ridiculous, you're not going to be able to get to it. So just always thinking about the next person coming along. So what do you do? Put your compression bands on this before you pour the hot water in it. It's all in the shop and set Just trying to keep it as neat as I can. There's not a lot of space in this cupboard, and obviously not being out of solder. And uh, my press gun. I've got a Rems press gun, but I rarely use it because it's it's 110 volt and it's an absolute pain. I do need to invest in a new one. So it's partly my my fault, but just do the jobs the best you can. these flexes so much but they're the ones that they've sent with the tap what you can do i guess is obviously you don't you can't you can't kink them but obviously you can bend them it's just how uh how i sort of do it i can sort of loop them behind a little bit i think whatever i do really it's not going to look the best but yeah i just don't like them obviously the hot won't be too bad we can just softly gently curve that in 
Right, the hole for the cord. This is where I put my connection, really. I don't know. I'll do so much with it. They, they could have been doing half of that length, really, and they'd have been ample. I mean, they nearly reached the floor. I mean, technically, I should put a drain off top down there at the low point, but realistically, you ain't ever going to use it because there's only such a small, small amount of water. got our hot coming into the blender cold coming into the blender on the wonk we'll straighten that up so all now we need to do is tee that into that cold supply there and then pick up these flexes as i say normally i'd put pipe shrouds around the inlets but the, the hole's a bit big to be honest with you partly my fault because that pipe's coming out on the wonk that's all on push fit behind i did it in push fit just because there was a void behind it you couldn't get copper in it was a right nightmare uh, obviously the walls and everything were all built when I came. I'm lucky these ended up in the right place because it guessed me a little bit. But we'll be alright, we'll sort it. I generally always use male irons on my flexes because obviously male irons flat faced that would just screw straight on it saves you cutting into that washer you can't you can obviously get flat face ISOs you can use red tails but they're not really rat approved um, so generally may not I mean the flexes that will go straight to 15 mil you know with a nut and olive on they're better and you don't want to go mental when you tighten them up just give them a nip Right, that's all plumbed in. I know I've used compression as I've already said, not much else I can do on this one. Made everything as easy to get to as possible. Um, so yeah, hopefully that should be right. What I'm going to do now is get that sink bedded in. Again, seal around the edge of the worktop. Obviously, I'll make the overflow up and stuff first. They should be okay. Normally, you'd order the waste kits with the sink, but I think they're inching a quarter of my cow pines will be fine. And then, I don't know what trap I've got for it. Oh, I just have to use. Oh, I've got oh, it's inch and a quarter. I use an inch and a quarter bottle on there, and I'll just have to reduce that inch and a half down. But yeah, that'll be all right. These don't use that washer because it's just going to make that seal proud. So what I do, I'm going to beat the silicon. I'm going to beat the silicon around it. Around there like that. Drop that in. I use that washer, but I'll only silicon one side of it, so I only silicon on the top side. If you go both sides, that washer will slip out. Just be the silicon on there. Like that. Drop that on there. Like that. And then. On the inside your screw goes through, tighten the screw up, that one big. These, what you want to make sure of these, 
there's no wash or anything on like that. Sometimes pop a little bit of silicon on them. Really tight. Make sure they're not too long, because if you have them kinked, it can double trap that one. That one's fine. But what you don't want is that sagging down, and you end up with water sat in there, and it'll end up smelling. And then we need to make sure this is sealed again. I say not really plumber's job because we didn't do the cutout on this, but we want the best job for the customer. Don't have to be out special. Right, so this basin probably should have some clamps of some description. I keep calling it a basin sink, but I can't find it. Um, so I didn't provide the stuff, so what I've done is just trying to bead the silicon around the outside. And to be honest, it will hold it as good as anything anyway. Does that have to a notch for the overflow has to go at the back, so it can only go, can only go that way because they've put a notch. As I say, once that silicon's gone off, obviously it'll wipe the excess off. It'll be solid anyway. Perfect. We'll just get the waste connected. That's that one done. I actually really like that old cutter. I know a few people say the track, but I don't find them too bad. What I'm going to do? Put um, each now 45 on there. Can I get it? Can I get it? In there? Use a adjustable bottle trap with a reducer in the 45, and I think I'll just about get that. It should look okay. So, yeah, we get that bit done, and that's that one all complete. I'll show you the ox cutter. Obviously, that end's been cut with a hacksaw, but this lock it on. I press quite hard. And then a couple of turns, it's cut, and there's no tracking. So yeah, F fairly good. Obviously, I'm not sponsored, but generally I'd always just use a hacksaw, but just just cut it nice. It's whatever works really. And I've had that that blade's been in there a year, so I think I got it last October time. Not that bit just like centralizes your thing, you don't have to use it. That washer goes on, then that one. Make sure that's pushed all the way down. There's a little bit tight one, and that just locks in and it centralizes your waste. Glue, whatever the other Just put them on with a little twist. That'd be perfect. Make sure you wipe everything down at the end as well. Just make everything look really shiny. Obviously, it's brand new, so it only takes 30 seconds to give everything a wipe. And it just makes it look that much more professional. I'll just turn the water on. I'll probably leave it off tonight, but make sure we've got no big problems. 
Right, this one I'm going to do at the back centre just because you obviously got another unit there and it's a little bit awkward to get to so it's going to be easier there I don't think it'll matter uh, I've done it 60 mil to the back I'm not actually going to film any of this one I'll probably just show you the end result um, just because it's virtually the same as the other one so I'll crack on with this one and then we just got the kitchen sink to do got the second one all plumbed in as well I just need to pick up a trap um, for the waste on that but yeah everything that's accessible uh, it worked out slightly differently but yeah um, i've actually got to go to another job now so i'll have to leave the kitchen sink for another day i've got to get back here by friday i'm actually super busy this week because school out of there is always busy school's booked in um so it's looking very nice in here i'm not going to show you too much but i don't know what it's going to be but i like all this lot looks good doesn't it yeah, um, as I said, I've just got that one kitchen sink to do and the Dock M grab rails. But I might, if I get, well, I'll have to get back this week, but I don't know how much time I'll get to film, so I might include that later on in the video. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. I never know until I edit it. <laughs> you know how it is. But yeah, we'll be all right. It's coming together. As I say, it looked quite smart, I think. It's all got aircon for the heating and stuff. Yeah, looking all right.